Teachers Talk Radio, and you are listening live. Good evening, I'm Amanda Kinsley-Smith. Thank you for joining me on the Sunday Late Late Show on Teachers Talk Radio. It is Sunday 12th of May 2024 and tonight my guests Sarah Burns and Jess Hawthorne will be sharing their experiences of their teacher training year. We'll be considering what established teachers and senior leaders in school can learn from them about how to support and encourage beginning teachers. This is Teachers Talk Radio and you are listening live. Tune in live at ttradio.org or to join in the conversation, download the Podbean app and search Teachers Talk Radio. Follow the hashtag TT Radio. Tune in, talk it out with Teachers Talk Radio. Okay, welcome to the show. It seems at the minute we hear a lot about difficulties with the recruitment and retention of teachers. And while we don't want to gloss over that or pretend that we can solve that issue in one night, answers on a postcard, we're going to consider what the student teacher experience is like and what all of us in the teaching profession can learn from our student teachers. So, you know, getting our learning objectives on the board from the start, as I'm sure we all do every lesson. Basically, thinking about it, what we're going to try to do tonight is try in some ways to answer the question that we all ask ourselves every year during that hectic term from January or to Easter or on to June or July, where we're trying to get courses finished before exam classes leave or trying to get primary school pupils prep for assessments or wading through those 11 billion reports that come up in the summer term. It's the question posed so beautifully by David Byrne and the Talking Heads once in a lifetime. And that question is, how did I get here? So my two guests tonight will be helping those of us who maybe have been in the teaching arena for a while reconnect with that wellspring that led us to this career in the first place and to maybe try to keep motivating teachers to keep that joie de vivre that most of us start with. We'll hear what Sarah and Jess's experiences have been like so far. Both have previous experience of work in education and are about to qualify as teachers. They've also been canvassing for the show to find out about other um, beginning teacher experiences. So they'll be able to give a wider experience, wider net really of experience there for us. And we'll be thinking about what established teachers and other members of staff in schools can learn about and how to support student teachers on this journey. Hopefully it'll re-inspire some of us battle-weary souls along the way and remind us of how we got here. Um, Personally, I've been a a teacher tutor before in different roles and I have learned so much from that role. So I'm particularly interested to see what we can learn from our student teachers. They spend an awful lot of time in that first year getting advice from everybody. And I really want to, to, flip that round a bit and see what we can learn from them and maybe get a bit of that spark back if if it has maybe started to waver a little bit. So Sarah and Jess, I think you're both connected and in with us in the studio. Is that right? You're very welcome to the show. Yes. Hi. Hello. (laughs) Hello. Lovely to have you both with us tonight. And thank you for speaking to other uh, student teachers as well for us. So if we just maybe start Sarah with you Mm -hmm. to give a bit of background, how did you decide to go into teaching in the first place? Have you got teachers in the family or, and, and what, what is it, sorry, as well that you teach? Yes, sorry. So I am um, studying to teach English, um, English drama and media studies um, as a student teacher and no, um, no other teachers in the family. Uh, so <laughs> sort of, I don't know, it, it was something I always sort of had in mind to do. I sort of left school not really knowing what I wanted to do. I knew I loved English and I knew I wanted to do something with that. Um, but just like, even when I graduated, I always remember people saying, oh, you did English, are you going to be a teacher? And I was like, no. Oh, no always. I don't, I don't, yeah, it's like, <laughs> no, I'm going to do something else. Um, no, but then I had a lot of different jobs, sort of flitted about for a couple of years and I got a job as a classroom assistant then in my old school. And I just loved it. I just love the building the relationships with the kids and just getting to know them. And I just like being in the school environment. And then I just decided, I was like, yeah, I'm going to go for my PGCA because this is something I would like to do for the rest of my life, obviously. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, I also work um, part time in a nursery at the minute as well. Um, not at the minute just because being out in placement and stuff, but over the summer and things, I'll be doing that. Um, and I love working with preschoolers I never thought I would 
I never <laughs> thought, you know, younger kids would be my vibe, but they're awful, awful funny as well. Do you know what I mean? Um, so just, I don't know, it was sort of something that I always sort of had, like, thought about, but I never knew until I actually had the experience of being in a school and, like, knowing what it was like. And, yeah, no, it was just... I didn't fall into it it was just sort of it was there and I was it just yeah it was just like yeah no this is something I want to do it's so funny that really resonates with me because I'm sort of in, <laughs> in between I'm in between both of you because my degree was English and Spanish which uh-huh. will obviously Jess that will be tying in with you yeah. but I remember exactly the same thing Sarah because I studied English everybody going ah oh, so you're going to be a teacher then I was like no mm-hmm. No, yeah. I'm not. My plan was to be a long distance, a long haul lorry driver. That was my plan. I thought <laughs> Go I'm going to take, I'm going to take my languages, and I'm going, I'm going to go and travel, and here's a way I can do it and get paid for it. And then the same mm-hmm. as you with your classroom assistant role. I was a languages assistant in a high school in Valencia in Spain, and I thought, here, no one actually told me this was such good crack. No one told me that teenagers were such yeah. good fun. Uh-huh. And I know, okay, they've all had, they all have their moments, but it was, it was the same as you having that actual experience in the classroom in a slightly different mm-hmm. role that opened me up to the possibilities of teaching and made me think, actually, this, this could be the direction that I want to go in. Jess, what about you? Yeah, I'm actually exactly the same. Um, <laughs> you, were asking, you were asking Sarah there if any of her family were teachers. And I feel like I have been running from the teaching profession my whole life. Both my parents are teachers. <laughs> my auntie's a teacher. My cousin's a teacher. I think it's just, it's like running in the family. And I thought I want to run away from it. But exactly the same as you, I ended up doing Spanish and geography as my degree. And in the middle of it, you have to go to a country where they speak that language just to to practice and just to improve your language skills. And I was terrified of going in on my first day to like the British Council language assistant um, role. I was terrified. I thought, please, no, I'm going to hate this. They're going to be teenagers. It's going to be awful. Oh, my goodness. Like, it was just bad. And I came out of my first day and I thought, oh, my goodness. Like you've said, nobody said how much fun it was going to be. And I think that kind of opened up the door for me to then think, "Mm, maybe it's a possibility. I'm not sold yet, but maybe it's a possibility. And it was really, really good fun. And I, I learned a lot. Um, so yes, I was running away from it and then I ended up, my path thus far has kind of taken me back down. So yeah. You ran away, but it caught up? It, it caught up. It caught me. It caught me. <laughs> I'm in now. I, I remember that experience of the first time standing up to teach English as a foreign language with the classroom. Yeah. But one of, one of my friends doing the same thing. Um, from England she stood up in front of her class on the first day and announced soy Carlotta which would be fine I am Charlotte in some places in Spain but in the Valencian dialect she basically stood up and said I am a carrot which Ah. uh, still better than my friend who accidentally said something very embarrassing and slightly rude but you know we'll not go into that one but it it, it, there is that that moment of okay things are going to be a bit wild and a bit unexpected but definitely what you want to go into. Sarah, did you consider going into, you said you've got some experience then with nursery as well. Did you mm-hmm. consider going down the primary route? Um, not really, no. <laughs> <laughs> Just, um, no, I look, we did, um, we'll have to do a week in a primary school during the PDCE and I really, really enjoyed it. I would just be a detriment to anybody in a maths class. Um. So just <laughs> no, we'll like, just stick with secondary um, and English and stuff like that. <laughs> um. But yeah, no, I do enjoy working with the younger ones, but I don't think I could do it long term. Whereas I love my subject and I love teaching my subject and I love interacting with the older kids. You know, we can get a better crack out of them. Um. But yeah, no, not really. <laughs> and Jess, did you consider staying? in Spain I mean we'll come back later on to d- discuss whether you might both consider going into other careers later at some stage but what sort of what was your role there or what made you decide to come home now yeah so like I said I, I had to go for my first year and I tried out the, the English language assistant and as I said I just loved it and then when I finished my degree I was kind of 
a bit lost. I thought I'm not really, I, I'm not sure of the direction I want to go in. And I just loved that year so much that I wanted to do it again. So originally mm -hmm. I started in a high school and then I did the program again the year I graduated and I worked in a primary and infant school. And I loved it as well. I, I just think I, I really do love all ages. And to me, it was very, very difficult to choose whether to do the PGCE for post-primary or for primary. Um, but then I was offered a job as a primary teacher in a private school because in Spain, they have different regulations as to the different kinds of schools that you can work in. And so because I had experience, I was then offered to teach P2. So that was like for a year and then COVID hit. So that changed things dramatically. Mm -hmm. But yes, I really did enjoy it. Um, I do love working with primary age students, but equally love there's just got different pros and cons and it's just very very different but i i do love it and i think you know covid changed the world obviously and it was very difficult mm -hmm. for all of us but in spain it was it was very strict and it was very very difficult i was on my own we were locked in our houses for about 49 days so it was it was difficult so i ended up moving back to santander where i originally did my british council um placement when i was at uni and i got a a job where I worked previously in the summer and I ended up really enjoying it and did that for two or three years and then started working at a university doing immersion courses for students from across Spain and again it was something new it was a new age group and I loved it I think that's where I've had my most fun teaching to students who really wanted to be there like you saw a difference in their level um when they first came to you and when they left your classroom because they just had to speak in English, you know, 24 hours a day and they had activities to do after class. It was really intense, um, but I, I loved it. And you were asking if I'd stay there. I would, but I mean, being honest, I think anybody who lives there or is from there wouldn't, w would agree with me. They wouldn't mind me saying the work conditions in Spain right now are not brilliant. Um, and so just to kind of make a career progression. I really wanted to have that certificate. I wanted to be qualified. Um, and that's the reason I came home um, and potentially would go back. Yes, I think I'm a bit more settled here now, but I definitely at least do like a few months somewhere or maybe learn a new language and get, get um, experience abroad that way. But I think especially moving back to Spain, unless there was a better work environment and conditions, I think it would be unlikely just at the minute. Yeah, so to get that progression, if you're looking yeah. at a prolonged career in teaching, mm -hmm. you think you've got more options in doing the PGCE and, and being home for a while, being in the UK for a while? Yes, definitely, because at least, you know, your PGCE, as tough it is, as tough as it is, <laughs> it is um like it is a door opener. I mean, you can use that especially a pgc from the uk you know a teaching qualification is is internationally recognized and my cousin right now is working as a primary teacher in valencia in a, in a british school so i mean your opportunities are not endless but you know they there are there are plenty if if you do have that qualification so i thought it was a really good career progression stepping stone for me to do to have yeah it was valencia where i did my year as the the auxiliary yeah and uh, absolutely loved it and i have good friends that still work there. i have a good friend from belgium who grew up in the united states for a while and now you know has, has taught in valencia for years has a family there all, all set up there and even whenever i was finishing just that year as a languages assistant there were british schools british language schools there mm -hmm. who were on the lookout really for student teachers and beginning teachers or established teachers looking for something different who would consider going and working with them you know all yeah. all english spoken during the day and as you say it was recognized as if you had the the pgc from the uk that you were the sort of candidate that they were looking for for those yeah. roles so we can see where it would be very useful there and um, we're going to take a quick pause for the news and when we come back we're going to look at what this year has been like and, and the student teacher experience on pgce so that's what we will come back to in just a minute I've always considered myself to be a caring head teacher who acts sensitively to support staff mental health. But what I found increasingly difficult was managing the negative impact on staff mental health when resolving issues related to their employment or daily work. Heartfelt leadership 
has been developed by TeachWell Toolkit as a handbook to support head teachers to overcome the challenges of school improvement while supporting staff well-being. We know that difficult conversations can quickly turn into conflict if procedures are not fully transparent, understood and followed. Our handbook takes you through step-by-step -step processes while maintaining mutual respect, avoiding conflict and finding solutions. At Bloomsbury Education, we're passionate about supporting teachers with high quality professional development books from leading experts. Whether you're navigating your first crucial years as an early career teacher or a more experienced teacher looking to refresh your practice or take a step up into leadership, our award-winning books are here to help. We publish practical books to support teaching across primary and secondary, from the very best in research-led practice to trusted advice on inclusivity, behaviour and curriculum design. Visit the Bloomsbury Education website at bloomsbury.com forward slash education to find out more and use code BLOOMTTR24 to save 20% on all education titles. Bloomsbury Education, books for every step of your teaching journey. This is Teachers Talk Radio, and this is Teachers Talk Radio News. Multiple media outlets have covered comments made by UK Prime Minister Rishi Sunak about pro-Palestinian demonstrations which are taking place on university campuses nationwide. Mr Sunak called on university leaders to ensure the safety of all students and highlighted the importance of universities as places where respectful debate flourishes, but called them bastions of tolerance. He went on to criticise a vocal minority who were disrupting the lives and studies of their fellow students. He also said that there were some cases of outright harassment that has to stop. The meeting with the university leaders aimed to address the response of higher education institutions to the surge in pro-Palestinian protests as encampments have appeared on more than a dozen campuses. Education Secretary Gillian Keegan has said that university vice-chancellors need to show leadership over concerns that campuses could become unsafe environments if they go down the route that you see in other places like the US. In recent weeks, TV footage has shown police in the United States break up demonstrations and encampments at universities and colleges across that country. Many images show officers in riot gear and in large numbers. In Scotland, new First Minister John Swinney has been accused of using the same old excuses as he refused to answer a question about whether he would live up to a promise made by the SNP to add an extra 3,500 teachers to the workforce. The Scottish Daily Express reports that Mr Swinney was accused of having a record in education of broken promises. The comments were made by Scottish Tory leader Douglas Ross. And Mr Ross went on to highlight cuts to teacher jobs by cash-strapped councils failing to provide a laptop to every child and abandoning a bill intended to raise standards. Mr Swinney served as Education Minister from 2016 to 2021. In England, Education Secretary Gillian Keegan has also been on record about the impact parents working from home has had on school attendance. Speaking to The Times, Ms Keegan said that 50,000 more school pupils took absences on Fridays compared to the start of the week and cited working from home parents who whisk their children out of school on Friday to take them off for a long weekend breaks. Ms Keegan said curbing the rise in absences was a top priority and that data has helped target support for parents and schools. Fines which can be issued to parents have increased from a minimum of £20 to a minimum of £80. The BBC reports that students hoping to start undergraduate courses in 2025 will be able to see the grades that recent successful applicants have achieved at A-level or the equivalent. Universities already publish entry requirements for courses, but they can be flexible and let students in with lower grades. UCAS is making the changes to help students make informed, ambitious choices and to give them confidence in their applications. Applications for undergrad courses for 2025 open on the 14th of May. The new tool should allow students to search a course and see the most recent common grades held by those accepted onto it in previous years. 
It will also show how many students were offered a place compared with those who applied. Students who get free school meals will also no longer have to pay the £28.50 application fee. Finally, international students in Wales are reported by the BBC as sleeping rough on some university campuses after struggling to find housing close to lectures. A long commute from affordable accommodation has seen some students sleep in 24-hour study spaces to help reduce costs. Universities Wales says it always encourages students facing difficulty to talk to their institution. Nida Ambreen of Bangor University Students' Union said postgrad international students were particularly affected as they often come with families and were not eligible for university housing. According to latest figures, there are 20,920 non-EU international students currently studying in Wales and the Welsh universities are aiming to increase that number as they can be charged higher fees. Members of the Welsh Senate have raised the issues repeatedly over the last year. But full details of this story can be found on the BBC News Wales website. This has been your Teachers Talk Radio News with Joe Fox. OK, welcome back. We are with Sarah Burns and Jess Hawthorne, and they are talking to me about their year, which is soon coming to an end of their teacher training, their PGCE here in Northern Ireland, uh, with Sarah becoming an English teacher and Jess becoming a modern foreign language teacher. And we've talked a bit about your roots in and how you sort of how you find yourselves going into the PGCE year and I'm wanting to go in. So now we're going to have a little look back over the year and the PGCE experience. I know there's other routes into teaching as well, but um, since we we're talking about the experiences that we know firsthand, that's PGC for all three of us, plus then additional experiences as classroom assistants, nursery workers and foreign language assistants. And I, we're going to think about the good, the bad and the ugly basically throughout this <laughs> because we're not going to gloss over it and pretend that it's all easy because if anyone's listening who is considering going into teaching, it's a tough year. But we're also not going to be all doom and gloom and look at you know why it's worth it, really. So I remember my PGCE as being a bit of a wake up call because I had loved my language assistant year so much. I remember my PGCE as being just so incredibly stressful, at least the first half of it. Yes. I was constantly sick. I discovered just how painful an ear infection can be. Never had one of those before. Yeah. Had to have my first <laughs> blood <worry>. test. <laughs> it was just, oh. oh, I was so ill. But a lot of that, I think, was from stress. I was terrified of making mistakes. I felt ill yeah. if I put a mark on any pupil's work in case I was found out as a fraud who hadn't a clue what she was doing. <laughs> and then there were personal things going on as well. Like in terms of my, my family as in slightly extended to aunts and uncles and cousins and all the rest of them and grandparents we had a, a bereavement a divorce and an illness all within my first placement and because I know and because one of the first things that a member of staff said to me in my first placement school one of the first things that she said was well I hope you appreciate it. it's an awful lot of extra work us having you here but as long as you're prepared to work hard we'll do fine and I thought I can't tell this woman that you know, I, I have all this going on and I'm going to pieces. And it, it resulted in one day me just bursting into tears and in that there was an English, there, it was a school that had sort of separate staff rooms for different subjects. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just, I, I think I spilled hot water on my hand and just dropped my mug, burst into tears. And whatever she said, it's okay, like, we'll, we'll, we'll grab that for her. I was like, it's not that, it's everything. And it all just came out in a big flood. And she just looked at me very calmly and said, well, you're a proper teacher now because there's not one of us that hasn't, had the floodgates open at some point and I thought oh yeah. dear <laughs> um, and so, and after that everything sort of lifted everything felt a bit lighter and my second placement was fantastic and in both placements I remember having some really supportive conversations with teachers and classroom assistants mm -hmm. and other members of non-teaching staff who remain friends to this day and I've been teaching now for 14 or 15 years and also meeting some incredible young people and their families who I can still remember just as clear as anything. So what, I mean, ridiculously broad question, but what has this year been like for you? Sarah, do you want to start us off? Yeah, um, it's been a lot, do you know what I mean? <laughs> sort of a shock to the system, you know, um, because I've been out of like education, I graduated in 2019. So I, my biggest dread, 
this sounds really stupid. My biggest dread about it was writing essays. Um, doesn't sound <laughs> stupid at all. Because like I was like, I can't remember how to write it. I can't remember how to reference. Can't remember how to do any of this. Um, and then that was until I was going out in placement. And then my first lesson that I was going to teach, um, my memory stick went corrupt. Oh. And I lost all the PowerPoints and stuff. Um, so that was fun. Um, technology oh, no. hates me. That's what I've discovered this year. Never to rely on it. Um, so, yeah. it's I've enjoyed it. I sort of, I like things being busy and, I don't know, not stressful. But you know what I mean? Like, I like, I like the busyness of it. I like doing something. Do you know what I mean? Because there was a yeah. couple of years there where I was just working and I wasn't really, you know doing anything I sort of felt a bit unfulfilled nearly I mm -hmm. like the striving towards something and working towards something I've enjoyed it um not to say that it's been sunshine and rainbows because it hasn't <laughs> but no it is it's just it's 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 worth it do you know what I mean it's hard work it's like but it's not like I had a lot of teachers telling me before I started, oh, it's the worst year of your life. You're going to have like, you're going to have so many mental breakdowns and all this and all this. It's just sort of like, it's not been that bad. <laughs> you know what I mean? And that's encouraging. Oh, have we lost Sarah? Oh, maybe we've lost oh, Sarah. Might have lost Sarah. <laughs> She's remembered those conversations and it's put her right off. <laughs> well hopefully she'll be able to to rejoin us but yeah hopefully she'll be able to come back in but yeah I remember teachers saying the same sort of thing to me before I'd started as well oh it's it's such it's such a difficult yeah. year um and I mean difficult yes but worst year of your life sounds like Sarah really had people trying to put her off it. I'm glad it hasn't um and, yeah. and what about you Jess um well, I have to say I'm a bit similar. Um, obviously, like I, I said at the beginning, a lot of my family are teachers. And when I came back, I've, I've been away living abroad for 10 years now. And when I came back, people said to me, oh, you know, you'll never get on the PGCE. Oh, you know, good luck with that. And oh, have you got a backup plan? And, you know, it, it was kind of a negative thing. It was like, oh, there's no teaching jobs. You know, you'll never get on that. So I think I did enter it with that kind of like, oh, goodness, is, you know, is it going to be really, really that difficult and to be fair as Sarah said you know it, it it is a very intense year um I think you were asking the question was what was the what has the year been like and I would say it's it's very intense um it's it can be very stressful because you have to get used to um not your just different schools but working with different teachers and there's different styles learning all the names of students and learning like their backgrounds and where they're coming from and very particular like individual situations as well as as Sarah was saying about her essays you know I, I graduated even before Sarah um I've been out of uni for a long time now and the writing the essays was a big concern for me and all of the university work and you know you're doing your assignments at the same time as adapting to all of the new information and planning your lessons and, and I do think yeah like it has to be very clear for people who might be considering it you know it it is a challenging year it is as Sarah and you were saying it is worth it but um it's certainly not an easy year by any means no I, th sorry, I think I that would be there, am I back in sorry very <laughs> very much something that will resonate with with everyone listening who's who's been working in education at all but Sarah is that you back with us now I think there was a wee glitch there I think so yes yeah I, oh no nope, still locked, maybe not um but oh, no. Jess, going back to you then, have there been any moments this year when you've really felt good about how something has gone or where you've thought, yes, definitely, this is this is the right path for me? <laughs> um, yes, I mean, this is going to sound really silly, but in my first placement, I was working with a year nine group and it, this was for Spanish and I was planning different lessons using different sentence builders um, and I, I gave students an opportunity just to kind of differentiate for themselves, just to set their own goals in that class. And of course, like many, many a student or many a person, nobody wants to have the lowest goal. So um, <laughs> I, I was, it was really wonderful because I set this task up and I said, you know, if you if you can work to level one, do what you can, and that's the most difficult that you can do, right? That's fine. Level two, add add extra information on, and level three, add 
another level of information on and I set the task off and modeled it and then I let them do it and I have never heard so much Spanish being used in a classroom and I was really just it was almost emotional like it sounds terrible it sounds terrible clearly doing a teaching qualification but it was just absolutely amazing to see that in action um, and just to think like oh okay do you know everything that I've taught this group they're using and they're not just as as everybody can experience in any in any subject you set a task it's as soon as you can as, as quickly as you can get it done you get it done but this was extended and continue talking for a good 10 minutes and I think I was just really blown away um, and another thing it wasn't necessarily related to this year but like Sarah, I was a classroom assistant just before I started this year as a as an SEN classroom assistant, and I was working with a very a, a very um um severe like severely autistic child who was nonverbal, and it was very interesting just to it was challenging, extremely challenging, but seeing that you've made a difference just makes makes it worth it just knowing that when those breakthrough moments come either with language learning or with a particular student seeing that oh my goodness we can communicate now or you know the students can communicate in their language it's just a very special moment so I think that would be something to, both of those times um in separate kind of areas ha has really made me think well yes you know I really enjoy this a job where you can make a difference and you can see the difference that you're making when sometimes in other jobs you can't so i think that'll be my answer for that one what's interesting there is for both of those examples i think everybody listening will, will agree we can hear how excited you sound when you're talking about <laughs> helping these young people to communicate yeah. and it's something that we maybe forget about but in both your sen example and your mfl example they're, they're both mm -hmm. about how you were able to help these young people communicate. And I think that any modern foreign language teacher will relate to the excitement of hearing the target language yes. being spoken. So that is not a small thing. That is very impressive. No, and Sarah, and can we, or sorry, no, go on Jess, what we said. I was just gonna say, if I, if I could, it was a separate occasion. And then my first placement, I was actually had the opportunity to do ELA classes. So teaching English as foreign oh, language. and. That was like a really special privilege. That that would be my real passion if I had to be honest, but let's not say that to any Spanish jobs coming up. Um, <laughs> but I just loved it. And I was working with um refugee children and newcomer children who didn't have a word of English. And it was a really special experience. And that's like, you know, you do realise, oh my goodness, by the end of a lesson, they can say the alphabet or by the end of the lesson they can say what they like and don't like in hobbies and I think that was you know that was an emotional time I thought that was a, an amazing opportunity sorry just tying in with communication um and I think that's been really really special and I've I felt very privileged to, to be able to do that and be part of that see this is exactly what I was thinking of at the beginning whenever we said that this was looking at what we can you know people who have been teaching for a while what we can learn from student teachers and it is that reminder of the excitement and how it's a privilege and those real important moments in that kid's life that you're there for yeah. so I think that I think that's a, a, a great one to throw in and what it sounds like what, what an experience to have as well it just yeah. I can see where that would make a big difference for you as well as for them Absolutely. um can we just appreciate the irony for a second of Sarah saying that technology lets her down and then, <laughs> and, then, and then disappearing? Is that you back with us now, Sarah? I think so. Can you hear me? We can yeah. indeed. We can indeed. Yeah. It hates so, me. I'm cursed. It, it, just completely yeah. cursed. I'm starting to think you might be right. It might just yeah. hate you. There are some, <laughs> uh, I've had some students like that where, you know, I have literally stood over them while they have hit file and print and what comes out is yeah. not what's on their screen. The yeah. technology just, there are some people it doesn't like. And maybe, you know, going no. into teaching, at least you're going in aware. <laughs> have you had any other yeah. difficulties with that in your teaching so far? You'd mentioned about your very um, first lesson, but I'm just just curious since it's yes. um, attacking um, there was you another time. <laughs> there was another time. Um, I was going into a lesson. It was actually the day that um, one of the observers was coming out because why not? Um, <laughs> didn't know they were coming out. 
So was stressed enough because I had lost all of my PowerPoints and stuff again because there was an update on the computer shop and everything got wiped basically. So I was sort of running about annoying the IT guy in school, just being like, can you help me? And he was like, nope, that's basically, it's all gone. So, oh, no. <laughs> and then I came running back around and then was told that the observer was here to come and observe my lesson, which I had no PowerPoint for. Um, was able to throw together something oh gosh it was awful looking um but you know man it we passed it that's the bottom line passed that, that one but no hate technology don't rely on it that's my takeaway from this year <laughs> <laughs> well what about Good the share. question that jess was talking about there have you had any of those moments where you one of those real yes moments where you're thinking definitely yeah. i'm in the right place this is yeah. this is oh, really God, good I... uh-huh no like just there's be, like there's just so many like it is just I love seeing what they come up with and English is like a subject where there is no real wrong answer <laughs> do you know what I mean so it's like one of these ones where, like seeing what they come up with seeing what they write seeing like in creative writing lessons seeing what they get down and like just what they've created I think is a really big motivator for me um just seeing what they're able to do and like I get like really emotional actually sometimes reading the things that they write I think it's beautiful and gorgeous and love it but um yeah just those light bulb moments as well like Jess was saying um just saying that you've actually like taught something <laughs> yeah um yeah but yeah just seeing what they're able to do and no, no matter what it is do you know what I mean like if they start out if they bomb into your class I hate English I don't I, I hate English lessons and all this and then you know they're standing behind to talk to you afterwards and you know act like trying in class and you know getting work done that they wouldn't have previously maybe done it's I don't know it's just we things like that I don't know that just make it all worthwhile <laughs> Yeah, and I agree with you about getting emotional over what they write, because sometimes, especially if you are teaching any sort of communication and or you're teaching English, whether to do any sort of personal writing or anything, mm -hmm. sometimes that's the outlet that they haven't had yeah. before. I mean, one of the things I remember from my, my teacher training year was being in a school on placement and the teacher had given them, I was sort of covering the class really that it was their their normal classroom teacher had left them a task to do and it was it wasn't one that she had written it was one that came from an actual key stage three assessment when when we used to have those yeah. um an external one and the question or the statement was it was the worst day of my life and it oh. could be creative or part i know see already you're you, you and lots of people who are listening at home will go okay this the bad question bad state we know where this is going so they had the option of it being creative or personal it didn't have to be anything really about them and I looked at the first few and there's like the worst day of my life was when I accidentally shot my sister with a BB gun and my mom took it off me and I was grounded for the summer and like okay <laughs> the worst day of my life was whenever I got this grade on this report okay and then I turned on over and it said the worst day of my life was the Christmas Eve where my mum told us that her cancer was terminal and I was going to have to go live with this foster oh, family and we had to go on Christmas morning and they're really lovely but they're just not my family and I thought I, oh. what do, do I mark this do I mark that and now that that it wasn't exactly that scenario um but you know similar things that are people talking about just things that were very very personal and a lot of the time not yeah. from kids who maybe you would expect, expect to yeah, respond uh -huh. so openly and I think it was really when I showed the, the classroom teacher um and I said you know and this one's talking about this and that one's talking about um, a motorbike accident and this one's talking about the other do you know they she was her hand flew to her mouth and she went oh, I can't believe I gave him that question um but but it was but it was one that they potentially could have ended up doing in an exam yeah. you know and I know and she just said, but it's really important that they have been able to write that. She went, you're quite right. We don't mark that. We're not putting a mark on those experiences. But it really opened my eyes to the fact that some of these kids who were so happy bouncing into my classroom mm -hmm. had all this going on so that I had on. no idea about. And that potentially oh. there are times when you'll find out something and you could be the first person that that kid has spoken mm -hmm. to about something. And mm -hmm. it can be 
difficult, but equally it is another one of those privileges, the one of those moments where we're like, yeah, because yeah. both of you have talked about that, seeing that you've taught something, seeing that you've made a difference. Mm-hmm. And I know that that's the sort of stop cliche answer of why people go into teaching, but it's become a cliche for a reason, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. It's, it's like a real high, do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you see just like that way, oh, right, yeah, okay. And it like might just, like, it's just, I don't know. But yeah. I think the writing aspect of it is really, I really enjoy giving writing tasks because I just love to see them doing it. Um, in my first placement, I remember there was a student, they were, you know, their attendance was, you know, really poor. Um, they would have been, you know, quote unquote, like one of the weaker students. Um, but during their exam, they had a bit of personal writing. And what they wrote, it was like I still remember it was just about their experience in school and how they didn't want to put their hand up in class because everybody would end up looking at them and they didn't want to feel stupid just this sort of like Mm -hmm. stream of consciousness about how sorry they them feeling like how they feel in class and I remember saying to them afterwards I was just like look don't be afraid to put your if you don't if you don't know something put your hand up and it was able to get that wee bit of you know communication with them about that that they were nervous about that and that they were worried about that and I like I hope it helped like well you know I don't know but um. <laughs> what we can do is try yeah so that's a challenge that that pupil and we've talked there about challenges that several pupils have that we're able to be there for them but what about you two in your experiences this year have there been any challenges that you have faced that you've you know obviously that you've overcome because you're still still in the course still going um, but what what sort of challenges have you come across this year? Um, I think me personally, I think it is mainly just sort of getting over that idea of feeling like a fraud. Like you said earlier on, like you feel like you, you're going to do something wrong all the time. Um, I think that is a big thing. That's something that I've had to work at to sort of overcome. The imposter syndrome is real. Um, but you know, I think it is just doing it, um, and just getting on with it. But otherwise, you know, it's just workload and just things like that. And you know, I think there was one time on my first placement where I had a really bad lesson, like it just went completely up in the air, and then I came out of it, and I was devastated because I'm not the best teacher in the world um <laughs> but I remember going back to my head of department and I was just like that was awful and he just went yeah that was awful I'm sure you, you keep going and I was just like right fair enough <laughs> keep going but yeah it is just um I think just pushing through it just pushing through the days that are bad because they're you're gonna have bad days that's something that I've yeah. sort of come to terms with um but yeah um specific challenges I think just really being on top of planning I think is a big one um get your lesson plans done and you know just make sure you're keeping on top of the workload basically yeah (laughs) as easy as that (laughs) yeah uh that's it but I think that's a good that's a good one to pick up on though that you've you've mentioned having that bad lesson and then being gutted because you're not the best teacher in the world that we can all relate to that one like we will all have had bad lessons at some point the pressure of the pgc is you you could have a bad lesson and be thinking oh my goodness is someone going to come in and judge me on this mm-hmm. whereas yeah. once you're in your own classroom at least there's not always you know going to be someone there to see it when you have one of those bad days because <laughs> we will all have them but as you say you're going to have a good day again after you have to just mm-hmm. keep pl- plowing on through it We're going to have a brief pause and then Jess, when we come back, we are going to hear about some of the challenges that you faced as well. So we will be back in just, (laughs) brace yourself, (laughs) we'll be back with that in just a minute. I've always considered myself to be a caring head teacher who acts sensitively to support staff mental health. But what I found increasingly difficult was managing the negative impact on staff mental health when resolving issues related to their employment or daily work. Heartfelt Leadership has been developed by TeachWell Toolkit as a handbook to support head teachers to overcome the challenges of school improvement 
whilst supporting staff wellbeing. We know that difficult conversations can quickly turn into conflict if procedures are not fully transparent, understood and followed. Our handbook takes you through step-by-step -step processes while maintaining mutual respect, avoiding conflict and finding solutions. At Bloomsbury Education, we're passionate about supporting teachers with high-quality professional development books from leading experts. Whether you're navigating your first crucial years as an early career teacher or a more experienced teacher looking to refresh your practice or take a step up into leadership, our award-winning books are here to help. We publish practical books to support teaching across primary and secondary, from the very best in research-led practice to trusted advice on inclusivity, behaviour and curriculum design. Visit the Bloomsbury Education website at bloomsbury.com forward slash education to find out more and use code BLOOMTTR24 to save 20% on all education titles. Bloomsbury Education, books for every step of your teaching journey. Okay, welcome back. Jess, we are going to lead off with you now. Can you talk a little bit about any challenges that you have faced during your uh, teacher training year, during your PGC? What challenges? <laughs> <laughs> challenges. Um, yes, of course. There have been many challenges. As I said at the beginning, I'll say again, because it's very worth saying, it's a massively intense year. Um, and I think for me, personally and obviously anybody who is thinking about doing a PGC it just to remember it is one year it's not forever it will end um and like Sarah was saying all these lesson plans it's been a challenge you know to to get those all done to think about not just the content of your classes but to think about how you know minute by minute what you're going to do what you're going to say um your lesson evaluations and as both of you were saying, just that any lesson that you're you're doing, that pressure that that is the day that, you know, you could be assessed. And, you know, like Sarah has had some technical <laughs> issues this year. And, I, you know, watching that has been stressful. Um, and just thinking, you know, could that happen? You know, is the Wi-Fi going to go down whenever the person's coming, coming in to assess you? Um, and, you know, you do have to obviously work with a lot of different people and, um, there's different styles of teaching and I think that can be sometimes challenging just to combine those um, as well as behavioural issues. I mean like a, a lot of um, teachers like now I've seen it with my own eyes. I mean there's a lot of behavioural issues going on in schools. Not every school, I mean some some schools are, are great but um, that can be really challenging and it can you know as a, as a beginning teacher you know, learning the policies of the schools and learning how to in like how to react to those situations um it has been a challenge you know it's been a massive learning curve um my you know main experience obviously was primary teaching so it was you know you don't get as much talk back you don't get as much <laughs> attitude from younger children um so yes definitely you know challenges behavior wise challenges just just workload as Sarah was saying as well and yeah just challenges in in different schools you know you're working with very different people who have diff very different ideas from you um and that can sometimes be a bit challenging as well so yeah but I think for me for like for anyone who was considering doing it it is a year and um, it will get you to where you want to be um and it isn't forever yeah um, I remember when I first started teaching my first year out post PGCE, I was teaching in a school and a friend of mine who I did the PGCE with did placement in that particular school. And I was really having difficulties behavior wise with uh, the form class that I had at the time. And they were, they were great. They were just pushing because I was new and yeah. I was nervous. Mm -hmm. um, and especially some of the boys who this was their last year in school before they left, you know, having, so it was their final year of GCSE. And they were a heck of a lot bigger than I was. Um, so there were sort of, there was a bit of, of difficulty there just with me finding my feet and establishing myself, but they discovered that I was friends with um, their teacher from the previous year who'd been on placement, whose surname was Trip, Mr. Trip, And uh, they had given him the nickname Army Troop. 
<laughs> because he was, you know, he was coaching rugby and all sorts of things in his belt like a tank. <laughs> so they were all like, oh, Mrs. Friends with Army Trip, leave her be. And I was like, oh, thank goodness. <laughs> I've, never, I've never been so relieved to be like, yeah, do you know what? I, I'll take that. I'll take that help and I will run with it. Because until I learn myself what's the best way in with this particular class, absolutely mrs friends with mr with army trip you you just rock on there and we'll run with that so <laughs> anything, yeah anything that helps <laughs> anything that helps especially at that you know i find that for that first year of teaching really quite tough because i'd be as you say jess the different styles in different schools i had learned so much especially from my second placement which i absolutely loved and then went into my first year of teaching with that school's sort of context in my mind and their styles and policies and ways of doing things and then was confused as to why that didn't work in a completely different setting. Yeah. But mm -hmm. it was a different school. So, you know, it is just learning that going from school to school, which I suppose is a good experience as well. I was a better teacher yeah. after it than I had been beforehand. Um, so what would you say are some of the biggest things that you've learned this year doing the PGCE course? I mean, it could be, it's very broad again. It could be anything, it could be about yourself, the job or has anything maybe been clarified for you during this year about what it is that you want to go and do next? For me, um, at the start, I, I'm very, you know, I don't really think that far ahead. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> um, but for me, it's sort of clarified where I see my career going. Um, you know, being a classroom assistant and all, my big thing was like you know the relationships with the kids like that was where I was sort of going to go I was always wanting to go down the sort of pastoral route um but now I haven't done two placements I really enjoy just the teaching and learning side as well um so I think I don't know it's sort of like clarified where I'm going to go more in my career like I've got like a wee sort of five-year plan for myself which I never have had previously. <laughs> um, so having that and having that sort of focus of, yes, this is where I want to be, this is where I want to get to, it's really helped with that. Um, maybe out of necessity more than anything, like, but um, no, and just, you know, just you learn so much. You're just, you're constantly taking on information. Like it's hard to narrow it down. Um, just being able to adapt, really, I think. And that things yeah. are going to go wrong and you know, just get on with it and you just go with the flow, baby, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, that would be my big takeaway. What I've learned most is you need to be able to adapt and you need to be able to go off, go off the lesson plan. You know, they're just there. They're, they just exist really at this point. Um, but, you know, and just keeping that sort of, it's like you were saying the other day about the course correcting and that oh, yeah. really, I really, I really have taken that on board. It's like you just throw it at the wall and see what sticks and just you're always going to be changing and chop, chopping and changing and seeing what works and what works for one student might not work for another and just adapting, I think, is my big takeaway from it. Yes, I think initially I slightly traumatized you with that analogy, where, um, which is one that had been shared with me before about whenever things aren't going exactly right, that, you know, when pilots are flying, they're constantly course correcting. They're never exactly yeah. bang on traveling along the flight path uh -huh. line. It's always slightly yeah. to the left and adjusting, slightly to the right and adjusting and, and going to left and right are obviously not technical terms, but you know, they're constantly making tiny adjustments. And that that's yeah. what we all do when we're teaching. And sometimes I think when you go into it or when you're a pupil as well, you think that the teacher knows what's going on at all times. And sometimes yeah. they're wrong and they're just adapting and adapting as they go. And you do have to go beyond the lesson plan. I remember a, a teacher friend of mine, when they had a student teacher in one year a long time ago and they looked at the lesson plans, the very first lesson plan, this poor person had written smile at class as the first bullet point oh, on their no. And you're like, no, no, it's okay. You don't need to plan in that level of detail. It will, it will come. You will, you'll remember to smile at them. It's, it's okay. And it, but there is that awful, how much am I supposed to write in these things? What's yeah. supposed to go into them? But yeah, you do then mm -hmm. get to, to go past it. What about you, Jess? What are some of the things that biggest things that you've learned this year? Yeah, I mean the quantity of things that I've learned this year. Good grief. <laughs> um, I think it's just become very clear 
do you know that a lot of people have an idea in their head about what teaching is you go in and you have your wee nice classes and you, you know you maybe do some corrections and you go home and it's fine when there's so much more involved and just being in schools this year is just highlighted that to me so much that it's just so much involved in teaching you know you're not just teaching your subject you're there pastorally you're there to hear you know those really you know you're getting alongside students and and through a big part of their lives and they're in school for a long part of the day and you know you do get to see like heartbreaks and really difficult situations as well as really exciting and hilarious things that happen in class which you know there have been plenty of and there have been times when it's been wonderful and just to just to see students excelling as well as having fun but there's so much more involved and just different parts of school life and how much teachers really have to work and admin sides and forms and documents and you know when things don't go so well like it's not you're certainly not just teaching your own subject so I think the biggest thing that I've learned is just how vast the job extends you know you're a nurse one day when somebody falls <laughs> off their chair you are a mum whenever you know students are feeling a bit lost you are like a toilet trialer you know setting people off the toilet every 10 minutes so um I, I just feel like you're you're so you're so much more than just a teacher and I think that's like been a massive um not that I didn't know that but just it's hit home this year as well those are brilliant things I'm just th <laughs> just thinking about how how vast those are and yeah yeah the Sorry. things that you don't think about until you actually look at it and you see all of the extra stuff that goes on beyond the classroom that you don't yeah. necessarily yeah. know beforehand I and should I should you I was going to say I should explain myself actually the toilet trials in, in a class I've got every two minutes there's someone like less than two minutes and I get so upset because I've asked them wonderful question and I'm so excited about somebody answering the question and then I'm like yes what is the answer and it, can I go to the toilet I'm like no it just <laughs> So I started the toilet trials. So I write up the names of in the list in the order that they're going out to the bathroom. So I should explain my toilet trials. The heartbreak of thinking someone's really got it and you're on a roll, and then the question's totally unrelated. And nine times out of ten, it is, "Can I go to the bathroom?" And you're like, "Oh, yeah, but could yeah. you answer my question first? Yeah. Or I had one where I was giving out, you know, the instructions for what this class were doing, and. And I was like, right, so any questions before you get started? And one girl put her hand up and she went, did you know you're wearing two watches? I was like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> but yes, I put them both. <laughs> um, it was planned. It was planned. <laughs> this one measures my steps and that one I can have a sneaky look at without, any, without you realising because it's where I hold things. <laughs> yeah, so I, I know that heartbreak well. So now that you've almost finished your teacher training, do you feel prepared to be the teacher in the room? Do you think that the year has prepared you for the next step? What do you reckon, Sarah? <laughs> yes, like for all intents and purposes, yes. It's just the thought of like going out and doing it, like being the actual big girl teacher. Yeah. Um, that's, that's sort of, you know, that freaks me out a wee bit, but it's just like, I know, I feel like I know a wee bit what I'm doing. I know enough. <laughs> it it remember... sounds like you're being quite hard on yourself here. Can I just say? <laughs> no, but um, I I know sort of what I'm doing. I remember one of my observers told me, "You're always learning. Like you're never gonna get it mm -hmm. all right all the time." So I feel like I just need to go out and do it, get my R plates off, and you know, <laughs> just have a go at it for a year and see where we're at. And then I don't know. I don't know whether I'll ever feel like a hundred percent ready. Like I think it's like any where you go into, if it's new, it's gonna be nerve wracking. Um but yeah, no, I do. I don't want to like make people think that I'm completely incompetent. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> but um no, it's just the thought of right, this is your class, you're entirely responsible for them. Mm, so that yeah. sort of intimidates me. And what about you, Jess? Are you feeling prepared now that you've finished the PGC almost? 
I know. I feel it was. I think Sarah said it wonderfully. Like enough. <laughs> I think. <laughs> I think it's. It's yes. I do. I think you know our university really does give us a lot of support and really oh does. God, prepare, I, yeah. yeah, it does prepare you really well in terms of like academic literature and educational theory and so many different techniques and ideas and. We had a we had two I mean the whole the, with lots of great lectures but just two that come to mind was we had a speaker in to talk about behavior management and it was very practical. He went through different situations and you know got us to discuss what we would do in those situations and then talk through what he does and the various reasons he does it in and I thought it was a really good lesson. Another was a lesson on how to use IT in your subject and probably like Sarah maybe not just as bad apparently um I'm not very technologically advanced um and so it was so wonderful to see all these different ways about how I can use IT in my subject and so I felt so much more prepared going in to have those skills up my sleeve to be able to use um but yes sometimes I do you know when someone's got a bloody nose I'm looking around for the other adult in the room like sorry who's gonna do with this um so I think you know I will certainly it will be daunting you know to start a new job hopefully get one first um but to start a new job and to be like the adult in the room like the, the real teacher but I do I do I think I'm after this year you know I think I'm ready for that and I'm ex ex it's an exciting time as well to kind of go off on your own and just not be so controlled in what you do and kind of have more freedom Absolutely. And as you were saying earlier, you on the PGC, you're you're very much in someone else's domain and you're having to sort yeah. of fit your style mm -hmm. with theirs. So there is yeah. that freedom of being like, yes, this is my class now and I can use some of those things. And it's brilliant yeah. to hear that your course has been so practical and helpful on that level. I think that's really important mm -hmm. to yeah. consider. OK, these are scenarios that might come up. How would you mm -hmm. deal with it? Here's some advice on how I would deal with it. That, that yeah. all sounds very useful. Are you mm. planning on staying in teaching? And if so, do you think you'll stay in it forever? Or do you think you'll stay in it for a while, for a long time? What What do you think at this moment? Sarah, what about you? I think I am in it for the long haul. Um, I don't know, ask me in five years, I might say something <laughs> different. <laughs> but at the minute, no, I'm in it for the long haul. This is something that I really care about and enjoy doing. Um, so yeah, no gonna stick it out and keep going at it and yeah I don't really I can't really see myself doing anything else anymore do you know what I mean um mm -hmm. like this this is where I want to be and this is what I want to do um because I do I do it's just it comes down to just enjoying it and loving it and then you know I don't know no I do I, I I'm in it for the long haul like um but yeah, just enjoy doing it. Well, that's exactly what the teaching profession will want, or is, <laughs> is to hear that you're enjoying it and that you're loving it and that you can see yourself doing it. Um, what about you, Jess? Is it something you think that you will stay in or do you think that you might use the skills and just having, having lived abroad, mm -hmm. do you think that's something that even staying in teaching but you know yeah. finding another place might be on the I mean, cards at some stage yeah at this point like I'm a little bit older as well um and I think I think teaching is a really really wonderful career um but I you know there is a lot of tension in teaching right now and for various reasons and for valid reasons and I think for me like I, I'm certainly in it for the for the indefinite future. I'm certainly in it. You know, I want to get out there. I want to try. I want to. You know, I am passionate. I do get very excited about lots of 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 experiences around teaching, about teaching ELA especially, about teaching Spanish, and um, if I have the opportunity, to teach some geography too. And um, that is, you know, a really I'm very excited about that. But you know, being very honest, I I think it would really depend if you know I was put in a very supportive school or you know a work a work environment that you feel valued in and you know just maybe not anxious and just supported and, and have your like professional development 
catered for as well so I would say yes I think I am in it for a long time but like again it would just depend you know on the situation of teaching and if teachers are supported in in the long term. I think that's really honest and open and I think there will be people nodding along as they're listening to that and going yeah and Mm -hmm. I love that you are recognizing as well the fact that the work environment is absolutely crucial to whether or not you are going to develop professionally and have the experiences personally that you need to have a fulfilling career and that is the thing that there there have to sometimes be difficult decisions in realizing that a, a place might not be for you but it doesn't mean that the job isn't for you or those skills that you've developed for you and it can be difficult to reconcile that sometimes to realize it's not it's not the whole career it is sometimes that Mm -hmm. environment you're quite right there are tensions in teaching and I think it's important that beginning teachers are going in with their eyes open to that and going okay so there are some amazing things there are also some challenges and difficulties and you might not get the right fit straight away but it's good that you're both sort of hoping to find the right fit somewhere and yeah definitely. yeah I think my sort of thing like there is obviously you know a lot of issues there's a lot of things going on in the teaching world at the minute my whole thing is is like I would sort of like to stay and try and sort them out if you know what I mean um mm-hmm. like try and maybe change things see what works and what doesn't and you know things like that I don't know call some shots somewhere along the line I don't really know but (laughs) yeah get into a position where you can help with that culture and uh make sure that people are being supported yeah and that's a big part of why I'm so glad that the two of you were able to come on tonight because something that we will be moving on to is looking to say what can schools school leaders people who've been teaching for a while non-teaching staff everybody like what can we do to support and encourage new teachers is there anything that you find particularly helpful during this year or maybe that you've heard of from other beginning teachers because I know you've spoken to other people as well Mm -hmm. and is there anything that's particularly supported or guided or encouraged beginning teachers that you've heard of or experienced yourself yeah um just being made to feel part of the school I think it it's it does so much I think um like don't underestimate how much that actually helps <laughs> Just, you know like you're made to feel part of the school and part of the department and you know you're just involved and you know you're not sort of sitting at the sidelines like that's something that I found really and I've touched lucky like on both of my placements like I found that um but yeah I think just being made like like another member of staff sort of and not the student teacher mm-hmm. but yeah and what about you Jess have, have you either experienced anything or heard anything from your uh from your friends or your colleagues about things that have really helped yeah probably exactly what Sarah said you know a lot of my my course mates I did ask them before before this um and just then you know that they do feel supported and that like Sarah said, like once you feel like you're not just the student teacher, you're getting called the student teacher around school, you know, you can just feel more part of it and you feel much more confident and that makes you a lot more competent at your job. Um, so yeah, just, you know, the small things, that, you know, when people say to you in the staff room, you know, how was your weekend or just include you or, you know, I think that's been lovely as well. You know, the te- some of the teachers where, where I've been in, in placement have you know made a wee effort to say oh you know how are you doing or you know if you're not mm-hmm. feeling well like oh here I, you know I'll run in one of my teachers I had an awful migraine one day and you know they said oh God, I'll go and get you like a, a paracetamol and I said like, oh that's so that's so nice um so I just think you know be like I suppose it's like any work just being inclusive and, and aware of difficulties of like being a student teacher when you're trying to learn everyone's name and the different like you know when you're a student teacher you're working with so many different teachers and you've just maybe come from a placement working with many different teachers and get into all those styles and I think it is quite stressful so whenever people you know do take the time to include you in things it makes a really big difference. Yeah absolutely and it's, it's reminded me of a couple of things. I mean, we're I think we're sometimes more aware of that with the students than we are with our colleagues. 
at our beginning yeah. teachers, you know, like I remember a principal at one point uh, at a, a, a workshop that I was at and, and she was explaining that she was speaking to a boy who had moved to her school that year and it was later on in the year and she was meeting up with him to see how things were going and he said what he was most looking forward to was not being the new kid and that yeah. you know these chats were very nice but they did point out to everybody again that he was the new kid and he'd been there a few months now and he didn't really feel like the new kid anymore <laughs> so in the politest <laughs> possible way <laughs> could he not have these chats anymore <laughs> because he didn't yeah. feel like the new kid the other kids didn't see him as the new kid but things that were being put in yeah. place to try to be supportive were actually pointing him out again as the new kid mm -hmm. And she was laughing. Hard as well. Sorry. He, just that she'd laughed and gone, you know. So there we go. That's me trying to help yeah. out. And I, he, he, thank goodness that he felt comfortable enough that he could be honest and just say, um, <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. No, I was just going to say that I think it's hard as well because you're only in a school three months at a time. So by the time your placement's up and you're starting to feel sort of established and settled your way again, um, so it's hard to like get in like to where you sort of feel like you have like a wee like rhythm with it and all um but yeah no just I've had a good time on both placements like I've loved both of them um but yeah I think it's just by the time you like get settled and all your way again that's something that I would change about the PGC <laughs> in all honesty <laughs> um I think it's you know Maybe, I don't know, maybe that's done on purpose so you don't get too settled, but I don't know. Yeah, that was just my... What would you do instead? I don't know. I, would, I feel like if it was seen more as like sort of like an apprenticeship, maybe. Mm. Where you like work in a, like in a school in a year, for a year um, instead of just those three months sort of stopgap versions. I don't know. I don't know. I haven't really thought about it too much but it's just something that I had noticed like personally by the time it's over you're just like right okay I'm you know settled here I don't really want to leave <laughs> yeah you're just settling in yeah but... what do you think Jess would that resonate with you as well does that sound like something that you've experienced um I th do you know I, I suppose just because we all are so different I think we enjoy different different things and what works for somebody maybe doesn't for another I actually like having the two placements it just means that you have a broader experience of school life and you know there's so many different types of schools there's so many schools in Northern Ireland you can't possibly you know go to two and say you know everything but at least two is more than one so I I actually do enjoy I totally appreciate what Sarah's saying and you do feel like, oh, you've just you just learned all the names, you just got the <laughs> humour, you just you just fit it in and you find your place and, and then suddenly you know you're ripped from it and back into uni and like, ah, oh, study again. But I do I really thought having the two placements was an excellent way to show you two different schools, show you the difference and, and means that whenever you're actually going into the career when you're starting, um, you know, you realise, oh, things are going to be different than what I've just been in. It's not just a wee bubble that I stay in. You see the differences, you see um, different techniques. And I think that's amazing. Like, I think you were saying, Amanda, at the beginning, like, you know, learning what works in one school is not going to work in the other. And it just makes you more prepared and gives you much more range of strategies and ideas um, to be more prepared in your in your job. I was really surprised with the two different placements that I did for the PGCE. One, by how different it was from teaching in Spain whenever mm -hmm. I was the language assistant. But also, the first placement were, was in a school that was probably more similar to my own school experience. And then the second one was completely different. And I thought I would feel more at home in the one that was most like my own school context. But actually... Mm -hmm. I find that one for me personally, I just find that one more difficult. And then the one that was completely different, that I felt was where I thrived. And yeah. I thought, wow, so yeah. actually maybe these are the kinds of schools I'm going to be a better fit in, in mm -hmm. the future. Yeah. And it wasn't where I necessarily thought that I was going to be going, but it really, I mean, part of it, Sarah, as you were saying, being made to feel like you're a member of staff and that you're part of the yeah. department. My first day in that placement, I was told, oh, by the way, it's, I don't know if it was integration day or something the next day. And it's like, so we're all coming in dressed as Disney characters. 
<laughs> and I'm like, oh, oh, okay. So I had to, you know, run home and try to put together a, a Tinkerbell costume yeah. before coming in the next day. Um, it. And it was, but it was literally just a case of, oh yeah, by the way, this is happening tomorrow. Um, we're all doing this. Come on in. Do you know, like, and I just mm-hmm. felt part of the English department from yeah. the very first day there. And they really reconfirmed for me that, yeah, this is definitely what I, what I wanted to do. And made me think, right, if I'm ever in that position, I need to try to, yeah bear that in mind and that links in actually what we're, we're going to have a, our, our last little pause now but when we come back we're going to think about advice that you can give because my goodness on the pgca you spend an awful lot of time listening to other people <laughs> giving you advice yeah. um so i i'm really interested to to hear more from you whenever we come back and we'll see what advice you can give to schools that are and to teachers who've been teaching for a while so that's what we'll come back to in just a sec I've always considered myself to be a caring head teacher who acts sensitively to support staff mental health. But what I found increasingly difficult was managing the negative impact on staff mental health when resolving issues related to their employment or daily work. Heartfelt leadership has been developed by TeachWell Toolkit as a handbook to support head teachers to overcome the challenges of school improvement while supporting staff wellbeing. We know that difficult conversations can quickly turn into conflict if procedures are not fully transparent, understood and followed. Our handbook takes you through step-by-step processes while maintaining mutual respect, avoiding conflict and finding solutions. At Bloomsbury Education, we're passionate about supporting teachers with high quality professional development books from leading experts. Whether you're navigating your first crucial years as an early career teacher or a more experienced teacher looking to refresh your practice or take a step up into leadership, our award-winning books are here to help. We publish practical books to support teaching across primary and secondary, from the very best in research-led practice to trusted advice on inclusivity, behaviour and curriculum design. Visit the Bloomsbury Education website at bloomsbury.com forward slash education to find out more and use code BLOOMTTR24 to save 20% on all education titles. Bloomsbury Education, books for every step of your teaching journey. We're in our last section of the show. And as I was saying there before we had those last messages, we have got an opportunity now for us to learn from beginning teachers rather than (laughs) constantly you being bombarded with all of our hot air. So what I would love to know is, first of all, what advice would you each give someone who is considering going into teaching? Jess, what would you say to someone who's maybe listening tonight and thinking about it? Yeah. I would say be very sure that it's what you want to do. Um, Although it probably won't matter that much because I think if it isn't, you will not stay the course anyway. Um, It is a very intense year, like we've said. And I think just knowing that it is going to be intense, you know, I think a lot of us have dropped our hobbies this year, um, even though we don't want to just to have time to do you have time to get things done? So I would say, you know, consider that before you start. Is this definitely something, you know, or if because if you're passionate about, you know, getting alongside young people, if you're passionate about your subject and you're passionate about um teaching, then it's gonna be the best year. You're maybe maybe not the best year, let's not go that far, but it's going to be one of the best learning experiences and one of the best kind of formation and and preparation years that you can have but I would say definitely if you're on the fence and you're like oh I'm not really sure I I would say get some experience you know work as a classroom assistant volunteer do those experiences just to see do you like being in a school environment is that where you're going to thrive can you cope because you know like we were saying earlier there is a lot of pressure on teachers you know they're stretched to beyond capacity sometimes and you know is that something that you're able to to deal with so I'd say think about it get experience um and see if that's something that you really are sure that you're gonna do very sensible and very practical what about you Sarah yeah just much the same just get the experience first maybe I think um I would not have been able to do this just going in having not worked in a school um yeah get the experience see whether you like it or not um 
if you're on the course, um, you know, I sort of struggled with like, you know, comparing myself to other students and like seeing what they're doing and then get myself into a tizzy because I wasn't doing that. So like, don't compare yourself to other people too much. You know, it's good to do it, you know, obviously share ideas and stuff, but don't be getting hung up on doing things differently from people. Um, yeah, get the experience. Be sure it's just something you want to do. Do you know what I mean? It is that sort of straightforward. If you don't want to do it, you'll not like it. <laughs> <laughs> you'll find out pretty quickly if you're comfortable yeah. in the classroom or not. I think that's that you will know. I think that's really good <laughs> advice as well, Sarah, that idea of comparing yourself to other people yeah. in the course, because there were people who just naturally took to it much yeah. better than I did at the start. No, 100%. And, uh, you know, and as I said before, my first placement, I find really difficult, but comp if it, you know, comparing myself to other people is just going to make that worse. Whereas I did have to find my feet and and get there in my own time and in my yeah. own way and as Jess mm -hmm. was saying earlier as well there are it, it is intense there's a reason that word keeps going up but everyone does have different styles and it's going to take a bit of a bit of time to find your own I suppose and if you're mm -hmm. constantly comparing yourself to others it's going to make it even harder yeah okay you're what about learning. yeah you're only learning I'm with, I, mm -hmm. I still am too <laughs> um so someone like me who's been teaching for a few years I mean I've been teaching for about 15 years now so what what advice would you give someone who has been in teaching for a long time? Is there anything that, that you would love for them to know or to feel or what advice might you give there? Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. It's I feel sort of bad, like giving it like, cause I don't really know what I'm talking about. I do know what I'm talking again. There's that coming up again. I do know what I'm talking about, but like, you know, I don't know, just to people who have been doing it for so long, like, um, just don't get sort of jaded, I think, would be the mm -hmm. the thing. To, like, sort of talking to my future self, nearly. Yeah. Like, don't get jaded, don't get bogged down in the negatives of it, and sort of just appreciate why you do it in the first place, I think. Yeah, I think that's a good message for your future self. Remember yeah. why you're why you're doing it. it seems sensible. Uh -huh. Jess, what about you? Yeah, um, do you know, I think that like student teachers who go in, like like I've said before, you've considered it a lot before you sign up to the course. You've invested financially. You know, you are passionate. You're excited. You have a lot of enthusiasm. Um, and you know you you're going into these schools with people who have taught for years, you know, decades sometimes, and you're there to listen, to learn, to gain the experience. And you know, all of us are like we we soak so much up, both like indirectly and directly from from staff members who have served like for many many years. But I think, you know, for teachers who have been le learning and and teaching for a long time, like be prepared to take light from any quarter. Um, being prepared to listen to new ideas um, and just trying not to dampen the enthusiasm of students if they are trying to try out new ideas or, you know, being very, very structured. I think, you know, one of the worst things that you can do is to kind of kill their light by being very, yeah. very, very constrained. And I think, you know, I chatting with some of my my cohort you know, they were saying just they don't even know what their teaching style is yet because they haven't had the opportunity to tr to try anything on their own. It's very much adapt to exactly how the classroom teacher wants it done because that is the only way that they are prepared to do it. And I think you know, as much as we have to, we have to, especially as a as a country, as a nation, as an industry, must respect the experience of a classroom teacher because they know they've experienced it they know what works best and they have you know so many years of knowing that and and with different classes but also being realizing that we're all humans and we can get into a rut we can kind of you know just go and and stay with what we're used to and not being a bit maybe being a bit more close to new ideas and i think some of the girls in my cohort were saying just that you know they're trying new things but it's almost as if it's wrong um, and just mm -hmm. maybe accepting that an activity done in a different style or a different way is just different not necessarily wrong and I, I think 
that's what I would basically say just you know some of us do have experience of teaching in different situations and it would be nice if it was a kind of a two-way flow as well um rather than just having to always adapt to this is how the school does it and so that's how it will be done I think you know I think everybody would would lo- I just think teaching is a collaborative sorry a collaborative um affair and I think everybody benefits when that happens so I think that's what I would say I think that was just a really strong feedback from my cohort um just letting people you know learn and, and try out things for themselves I think that's really a brilliant message to have as well Do you know I have to say as someone who's been teaching for a long time and who's been a head of department who's been on SLT as well at a time I have learned so much from student teachers and from colleagues and seeing things that and be, being another subject observing in other schools things that I just never would have thought of doing and it's been brilliant and I think it's so important not to close ourselves off to this and as you say saying things that discourage and I, I, people don't realize at times whenever they're saying things and they maybe say it as a joke but they don't realize how negative they're being I've yeah. I remember that on the PGCE not in my case but some other people saying that you know they were really proud of a display that they had done of student work and mm-hmm. the teacher sort of went oh yeah you'll you'll not have time to do those sorts of displays in the future or you know we comments like that or oh, you're wasting your yeah. time with that it can be so disheartening so I think my advice would be along the same lines as you there just you know bear in mind what you're saying and that it's going to have an impact so try not to be jaded as Sarah said but also be open to learning from the new people in the room as well and what about taking it further then thinking about senior leaders or or heads of department or principals like what would it be useful for them to know or to remember even just about supporting beginning teachers um I think just from what we were talking about earlier on about like just including them in the school like Mm -hmm. I think don't underestimate how much that actually means (laughs) just being part of just feeling like you're part of somewhere um and that sense of community that all school uh, well any school that I've been in has that like this sort of immense sense of community and you know that you're just part of something that you're all working towards the same idea just don't underestimate how much that can mean to somebody coming in having no real experience of you know being a teacher or whatever just including them and making sure they're involved and yeah brilliant I think that that's such a a great thing to hear and I'm glad that on the show we've been able to give you the space to do that because I think that is, is a message that is a really important one to get out there and what about you Jess yeah um I think like I was saying before really you know we like as student teachers come in like excited and know that we have so much to learn and and soak up um and I think just like senior leadership can really set a tone as well just for for the whole school as well as to how a student teacher is treated um so I think just remembering that you know we're, we're doing our best and remembering that we will make mistakes or we'll have days that maybe don't work that well but do you know that everybody does better when you know there's there's like a positive you know you're you're treated positively as well so I think like Sarah said do you know just being included in things means you're more competent and confident to do your job um and I would just say yeah just just that really probably just what I would have said before well I think that's fantastic and definitely for me that is you know I've learned just from our discussion tonight and hopefully other people will as well from listening to it and we will just be that bit more mindful of making sure that everybody is included and that they don't feel like the student teacher rather than you know (laughs) the colleague (laughs) and getting everybody involved well Ladies, can I just say thank you so much for joining me tonight? I no, have thank you. absolutely loved this. Is I've really enjoyed tonight. <laughs> um, I really like covered so much, and I, I hope that that anybody listening is able to to get as much out of it because really, I feel like you've made such insightful comments about what the year is like. But you've both been really honest the whole way through, which is, is very helpful as well. And I love that advice at the end that we can all take something from regardless of whether we're at the very beginning of the career or whether we've been in it for a while or maybe 
approaching a change in career or anything. I think that you've you've covered everything. You've got you've got <laughs> advice for everybody in there. So thank you very very much. And that thank is you. the end of our show for tonight. Hopefully you'll be able to join us again at some point in the future. Thank you for listening. Yeah, hundred percent. Ooh, definitely. <laughs> You've been listening to Teachers Talk Radio. Tune in live and listen back at ttradio.org. We look forward to hearing from you next time on Teachers Talk Radio.